Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant Team Ban. Dire Team Ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant Team Ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire Team Pick. Radiant team pick. Bang. Welcome back, everybody. Game number two here between Mineski and Navi for the ESL1 Genting group stage. I'm one. Moving into game number two as we get ourselves all ready for the draft. Five seconds remaining. Time bands complete. First pick done. But the Naga has been removed. Na'Vi do not want to handle it. It was quite something. He definitely, you know, stopped their plans dead in their tracks and they were just stuck in base. I think Naga is one of the most traumatizing experiences to play against when she has that level of farm and she just keeps you in your base. It can be so frustrating. Again, we are going to go with their Enchantress. We'll see if Chen gets picked again, but, you know, the, there wasn't much of Chen versus Enchantress fighting since this is an offlane edge. Not really something that happens that much. Obviously, she tried to take the chain creep, but didn't have any success. Rubik, yeah, those the like pick. fun bit bot lane, like two minutes in, where there was the trading of like Elf Wolf and Dark Troll. But mm -hmm. after that, there was. And uh, we'll see what Navi go with uh, combination here. Quite likely, they're gonna pick their board, but change their plans a little bit as well. Maybe even uh, get a gyrocopter earlier if remaining. they're expecting Isis Ice the offlane edge again because it was banned out in the second lichen maybe can be tough to play lichen in the early game again and even once you have your helm of dominator she'll take your creep you dominate it back and then she has the cooldown is much lower and, and so it can be frustrating in some ways it's more about the early lane i think they need something that leans better against edge I Especially could, I could ice, sort of ice, see Ench uh, getting picked into like because of not being able to get attacked by dog. Don't get harassed back, you're all fine. Exactly. And Mineski have the Rubik against the Bane, the deal there of Fiend's Grip, the Lift Cancel. A reversal from the previous game. Played it the other way around. Of course, both the supports doing a good job, both the Bane got some beautiful grips, but Rubik also stole it. Definitely a smart 
smart thing to take the Rubik if there's a uh, Bane Bane's on the enemy team. team quite easy to take a good spell from him. Elder Titan. Okay. Out. General does like playing this. So I wonder if they're going to play it on uh, 3. They're going to play it as Nice with Bane, you've got a natural setup of Nightmare just to have level 1 Stomp remaining. come in and do some work. So... Tons of control under two first picks as well. It's just good disable. Remaining. That uh, Mineski, they have Rubik, but other than that, roll of uh, crowd yet. Phase Void taken out. Of course. Void. Classic. The Chrono Earth Splitter, we've seen that time and time again. The combination that you don't want to play against. Remaining. You can suddenly lose your poor hero and he doesn't have about it. Five seconds remaining. Get it get it out of the combo here. Pick something else. Especially as Navi are definitely not a team that are unhappy playing Void. They've played that historically so much. Uh, I mean, both of their both of their play or off lane and safe lane players, uh, General and Fly, is both very good on the void. Gyrocopter banned by themselves here. Hmm. Okay, Navi, they they do not want to do. They have something else. Maybe they just forgot it was banning phase, and they thought they were picking a hero. <laughs> Probably just accidentally. Oh wait, 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 wait. We wanted that, <laughs> guys. <laughs> Whoops. So nah, I don't. Heroes, it. <laughs> heroes against Enchantress when you've got a Bane on your team. What are we looking at here for Na'Vi to try and win that lane? Because I, when I see a Bane, I think of like a Razor on a safe lane to get the static link damage going. How would you kind of shut down Isa? The thing that people used to pick is the Earth, but it's not as good anymore because the Enchant removes overpower, so it can really backfire to try and go for an Ursa against it. Um, I think that Razor is still a very good hero against Enchantress. You want to pick a solid safe laner who can still get something, but then you sacrifice hard carry potential. Yeah. Most hard carries struggle a little bit against this match. Banning out Jaro, I mean, I saw Jaro as Ten one of the cleanest remaining. options. Then you can go for maybe a Clink's work. Five seconds See what they remaining. want to go with. Entirely sure that they want to play a safe link Clink. Interestingly enough, for Genting anyway, Phantom Lance is still in the pool in a second. Seen him first phase picked, banned, second phase banned, and outside of that, he's just been in the game. But now, when I ask you with this pick, do you think go for a Phantom Lance, or is it maybe now something you think about later on into the draft? Both teams could pick Phantom right now. It fits quite well for either team. Not if you play it. Okay. I mean, Enchantress, yes, she can steal one of the illusions, but hardly ever has any real impact. Pain, Pain. Pain. Yeah, get up first here. A hero that uh, both Moon and are really good at. Where are we going with this? What are we looking for? Ten seconds See the Queen remaining. already? That's an early reveal. I have a feeling they might play TA in this game. Five seconds remaining. Uh, my, my TA senses are tingling. Raised I can see it. These are three heroes that are not... Dragon Knight. Okay. Dragon Knight. That could also be played as a safe lane Dragon Knight. Yeah. Horrible. Because you have so much HP regen, hard for Ench to go through all that. This could be one of those debates where you pick Dragonite early and then Ten not a mid. Remaining. Try and have, what, a DK 1v1? Not necessarily a 1v1. Just play him as a normal safe link carry. Okay. Protect him a little bit with the Bane and fine. Uh, if you minus, minus damage uh, Chantress with uh, Bane, you can be do able to do anything. And, you know, we've seen it before here on our stream. The Dragonite in late game turns into a real monster. He can definitely get carry. Who, what was that game where we had Dragonite, Bloodthorn, defending base and all that? It's been multiple ones. I know which one you're talking about. Playing the Dragonite. We'll, we'll think about that. We've had so many games. <laughs> it's <laughs> just a blur in my head right yeah, now. I can't believe it's only been two days. It feels like an entire week of Dota's happened. It's been so action-packed. For sure. The amount, amount of Dota that we're digesting here. Short amount of time. It's so, beautiful. Maybe with a Brewmaster, some team fight control for them. Pretty good against the DK pre-BKB. You know, ulti, you Cyclone him. Good against you, Bane as well. One cancel, more way. Cancel Grip, cancel Echo Stomp. Channeling spells from Na'Vi that... 
Other it's than funny. That. We had Brewmaster against exactly those two heroes as well earlier, where we pointed out also the can cancel grip, cancel stomp, uh, identical to previous Radiant scenario we've had. So yeah, it's something that teams do. And PL does come out. There we go. He comes out to play. So uh, I think that means TA is off the table. Uh, but Navi, they're starting to secure themselves some pretty strong late game. Definitely looking advantageous for them if they can break this game out. However, they need to go in a good way, and uh, Rue is quite the strong laner. Enchantress now, of Five course, seconds. looking more like it could be a, a roaming. Right. We're looking at the team Dabs Enchantress, Ninja Boogie Rubik. Quickly here for a minute. Definitely. Ban out the Bat Rider, maybe. A bit worried about, like you were saying, with the Elder Tides and the flexibility of that pick. If General takes it, then sure, but... Expecting... Sure. Now, Titan. Bat. Navi, what are we looking at here? You, you, you're talking about a Brew offlane, Bot mid, and Dance Roaming, Rubik's Five. They ban the Sven. A good option for the Sven would definitely be one of the easiest heroes to play here. Uh, other than that... Kind of tough, because you need a hero that deals with both Ursa and Phantom Lancer in a good way. They do have the benefit, though, that they get to see one more hero before they decide what parry they need. Remaining. And that's kind of what I'm feeling as well right now. Like, yeah, you are you need to pick a carry. Remaining. To me, it looks like a high pace carry pick could be pretty good here. Going late into this game. Like so. a Venge? Probably a Venge, but Venge is so bad against... Heal, though. Super single target, right? Mm -hmm. The single target can be hard to land. Radiant team pick. See what Night they want. Stalker. Night Stalker gets picked up. All right. So that they are still keeping it kind of in the dark here. You know, we don't really know. I can't believe Lycan is on top. Can, can, can they go Lycan? They could still. They could still go Lycan. It's not a bad game Ten for it necessarily. Remaining. With a Night Stalker. It is fifth, tough right? against. It is tough against the peel. But other than that, remaining. he. Works quite well with the. Uh, he has to uh, try to anticipate what they want to play here because it really comes down to their approach. If they want to end it early and pre uh, prevent this late game from happening, which I think is a good idea, they want to pick something up. Pushing hero terribly looks to play against all those yeah. silences, though. Or, you know, silence of the grip and DK stun. There's so many good ways to deal you with. Know, Lycan doesn't look too good for the same reason. And Maybe because, CK? And then because there's a PL and an ET, you don't want to like pick a Medusa or something like that. It all gets pretty hard here for them. Unless they want to swap around these lanes, you maybe see, like, outside of, outside of kind of attributing lanes to people and heroes here, an OD could be decent here against DK. Clear out PL illusions with your Santa clip, but then it's... OD could work. Yeah, it could work. The... The downside would be Night Stalker is super good against OD. I was thinking, uh, I was honestly, just about to say that Juggernauts with Battle Fury <laughs> could be an option. I didn't see too many options for them, and Juggernaut is very often one of those fallback uh, baseline. Uh, he, he is one of those catch-all kind of heroes yeah. that, yeah, he adds push, he adds late game, he is very all round, mm, but he is gonna have a hard time the longer the late game goes. With uh, Rubik and Enchantress support, obviously he has good kill potential. That's uh, going to be the lineup for Mineski. I do favor Navi here in the draft, and I didn't favor them in the previous game. Maybe they can take this to uh, to a game three by forcing a win here. We'll see. Mineski can play out their a little bit strange-looking draft. Ten Super clear and uh, clear-cut how we're supposed to execute the game. Five seconds remaining. We'll get ourselves in and figure it all out. I do like the set on Mushi, man. Shiny Juggernaut. Beautiful. Shiny, shiny. I'm not so sure about Ice Ice Ice. All this fire coming out of his little item there. Jabs Enchantress. Not going to be the same as the Naga last game with the, the free path towards the Radiance after the Arcane Boots. Definitely going to be a bit, uh, much more action-packed for Jabs. With yeah, his he, he probably can't movements. get away with playing as greedy in general in the previous game. So this game he probably has to put more pressure early on, itemize around that, perhaps even go for something like a early Rod of Aethos or something. We'll see what he wants to go for here. 
teams heading into it. I'm excited to see what they can bring with this. Game number two. Manescu won game to the good. Jabs over on the Enchantress with an early Blightstone with the Orb of Venom. It looks like a Medallion Rush that we used to see quite commonly on the 4 roll end time. Sort of, but it's also just the harassment damage from his, uh, you know, running around right-clicking. It's going to be really strong, having both minus armor and damage over time from the 57 base damage. Well, 52 to 62. Quite a bit of damage. Fair amount. Down towards bottom, we do have Juggernaut, Ice Ice Ice, Brew, Moon, Quop, and Ninja Boogie, Rubik. See if there is any kind of incursion here from Navi, but they've swung a little bit further to the north. People often miss their smokes in this compared to before. If we go back like a year, people collided a lot more, but that's because the places that people value warding and so on is a little bit different. If there's any form of connection here, General just running in. Oh, not really paying attention, but I get out. Taunt him away, Ice Ice Ice. <laughs> oh god, they gave a hero with taunt to Ice Ice. They lost. That, that is a big L. So General's on the Night Stalker here with boots first, which means Roger on the ET, also with boots up on him. <laughs> Move things around a little bit there, but Night Stalker off lane, something that really does seem to be very player specific. A lot of teams have shied away from the Night Stalker off lane just because you can get kind of the same emphasis and same utility out of it from role as in the off lane. But General's a little bit different. We see quite often from him physical right click build. Yeah, you can get to a point where you deal quite a bit of damage. Or, or precision three, sorry. He did ward under the enemy ward, so they know exactly where he dropped that. Be a little bit unfortunate for him. Jabs starting top. They've given General this lane up at top lane just to try and sack him against the Ench and the Brew, meaning they're playing aggressively bottom into Mushi. Crystallize and Seneco both here with a PL and the Bane. Trying to pressure back the Juggernaut for now. And look at Roger just diving in. His spirit's already up with a whole ton of movement speed. 404, in fact. Yeah, he gets so fast. Movie. He hit all the heroes with the spirit, so that's when you get real bonuses from it. Brewmaster in a melee versus melee matchup should be Isis Ice favored, I feel like. Drunk Haze. It definitely so, should be. Stout Quelling Blade should be looking good for him there. He Two. also has the better build for 1v1ing. Boots first. Oh. As they go down here. Nice trade back and forth. Oh, they do get the Rubik as well. Yeah, first blood and two kills total for the side of Navi. A good start for them for sure on this lane. Not so easy to connect cleanly with the Blade Fury on this lane. So Elder Titan is super fast with the boots. Bane is quite tanky when, and also has the boots. And then you have uh, PL who's obviously elusive. Phantom rushing, doppelganging stuff. I was going to ask where Jabs kind of focuses on because, you know, talking about the top lane kind he needs of to come bottom, yeah. being fine for Ice Ice, he definitely needs to make a swing down towards here with a Wild Wing and a Centaur. Throw the tornado out and contest this bounty rune. They do have Telekinesis dump from the Centaur, which is not set up into play they can make. They would love to have Juggernaut hit level 3 before that kind of play, just to have that extra bit of damage from the Blade Fury. He gets to deny on the Haste Rune, as uh, Roger was trying to get it. The Enchantress. Feels bad for Mushi, and feeble now from Suneko. 1-0 build over on him. Centaur times out and jabs. Really only with right clicks left to throw into the mix and look Spirit coming out. Still pretty decent right clicks though, so he could just sit around here and act as a harasser on the lane. He needs to do that. Well, not so easy to uh, lane for Mushi here. Forced to spin away, in fact. Real difficult lane for him, but they've got the wave under their tower now. Should lead to CS for Mushi at the very least. They're focusing a lot on the bottom lane, and that's because that's where the action is going to happen in terms of kills. Mid lane, quite a wash right now. 12 and 3 for Queen, 12 and 0 for Dragonite. It's very hard for them to really get too much damage onto each other. Uh, since every support is bottom anyway, they're not in danger of dying or getting. Fully as we expect from that lane, but now, ooh, thinking about it. Jabs was coming in behind the PL. I have a point in that doppelganger, though. Boogie also shoving this wave forward, but playing under the enemy tower when there's E.T. and Bane. Still a very risky proposition. Up at top, Ice 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 fighting under the tier one. General 
He's out of regen. Completely out of regen. So, General doesn't have a magic wand against the Drunken Haste Brewmaster. That's a really bad thing. You want to have that magic wand for sure. Because every time you go for a last hit, there's going to be Drunken Haste on you. But he never got to go to his side shop, I think. Got zoned out of it. So, uh, for now, 10 and 6, though. Not bad work by a nice talker for sure. I think that lane is very, very difficult to get that made. Bane? Yeah, initiator upon. Spirit Stomp, Roger steals the Bounty Rune. So Nako zapped down though, and with the Blade Fury they get the kill. Traded off for Jams' his life, and Ninja Boogie looks like he might be the second one here. Roger. Could be a double, yeah, for sure. One more Spirit Lance. They've got a Stomp and a Spirit if they really need to throw it into the mix as well. Well played by Roger, just like runs in there after the Stomp, steals the Bounty Rune, gets the damage in. Mushi does get a little bit out of this as they found the kill on Suneko. Jab's got the kill, but still... It's really big for Crystal Vice. The start, I mean, he's now been part of four kills. He hasn't died. Three of the last hits went to him. So he's getting a lot of gold. The only one who died on their lane is the Bane who died twice. And that doesn't really hurt them that much. But Elder Titan also having a quite good start. Almost so, has the Soul Ring. All round, huge improvement from game number one now for Na'Vi, right? Yes. You, you like their draft, you prefer it over Mineski's you, lanes, you're looking at them, and outside of General, who's kind of been sacked, but now it's first night, he has phase boots going, he's kind of ready to go and make a play, but he's been spotted moving across, even after he uses a shrine, it's going to be hard to really get into the action. For but, sure. Unless maybe he TP's bottom. He could TP bottom, but he wants them to be a little bit closer to a tower uh, before doing so. He's just going to go back to his lane, make sure that shrine got used. Uh, he's been doing a great job. 16 and 9 is much more than I expected him to have at 5 minutes in. He's trying not to get a kill onto uh, I mean, Ice Ice. Ice Ice is in trouble here. Yeah, he is. He's, he's not level 6. definitely going to die, I think. General has another Void, level 3. The salve is cancelled, and General comes back from the shrine. I can, gets a beautiful kill. I cannot believe that General is winning Night Stalker against Brumet. But I can't believe it. That lane is not supposed to go that way. <laughs> That's well, beautifully done, though. Ice, 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 just overstepping, it looks like there. Three heroes still down bottom for Na'Vi. Mushi and Jav's just kind of falling back a little bit. Let me get too involved. I'm thinking about contesting the bounty rune again. This fight is happening once more. Everyone coming out, and it's going to be Suneko again. Got to be targeted. He's got the Blade Fury going, and Suneko looks like he will take a tumble here. One more hit should this do time the jug, though. Mushi. Dropping low, but he's got the slices in onto Roger. Quick on his feet, though, with a boot and the spirit. Jabs. Forced away with a lance. Crystallize looking to try and chase this one down with the help of the ET. Stomping Meanwhile, General has, General has gone on a kill on the Queen of Pain. Did that rotation, came in with silence. Uh, this time successful. Great start for both the Dragonite's mid getting that kill. Yeah, she Together dies with inside, uh, nice the, dies inside the Roshan pit. Mm. Moon. Yeah, he was going to check the rune. Not really work out for him. He got the rune, though. He bottled it. Still has it. The region. <laughs> Doesn't really help him now. No, not really. Now you're full HP. He's bottom, trying to do something. Does not have ulti on Queen, though. Crystallize has used the doppelganger now, though. Mushi's oh, spinning geez. away. They've juked them. Crystallize moves east. Ninja Boogie's chasing the correct He's one, salving. but salved up. Soneko now turning with the help of the sleep. Roger catches, and they kill. Crystallize is still running. And there's no way to track him down. There's no way to find him. He's Soneko out. getting the Soneko. kills now as well. Two in a row and they're going for more. They want a triple kill. Soneko wants get to it. get this Ninja Boogie Rubik. You've got a lift. You will drag the bait up into the stun. Cancel the stomp. But look at General. A killing spree for him as he moves into the bottom lane. The pebble throw of the little golem will slow General down. But it's not going to stop this man who's on an absolute rampage. Very, very good rotations, already having had great impact on every single lane. The quite impressive movements there by Navi. PL, you know, crystallized, showing why he's number one on the leaderboards. Uh, juking away. And that salve as well, that was pretty clutch. The fact that he could go into a tree line with yeah. the salve, turned everything around. Where did crystallize even come from? Never heard the name before, and all of a sudden he's on Na'Vi and he's slaying people, he's top he was, of the leaderboard. Yeah, he was a good uh, pub player for a long time, you know? He just caught his break. That's the case for a lot of, uh, he pulled the bulldog. A lot of different players. Yeah, you could say that. Play with Na'Vi. Or, or Na'Vid, or Earth's Mail, or... I wouldn't say he's uh, done it perhaps to exactly Sumail level of best yet. Crystalis is definitely working well. Risk. Ice, 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 top. 
has to deal with him. Crystallize has shifted up there as well with a PL. We're looking at this Brew level 7, closing in on 8 now. Primal Split's ready. Looks like Jabs wants to try and make something happen. Top, Taneko throws his face. He's like, nope, not that way. They uh, cool down still on the Hurl Boulder. Quite get that catch. Jabs. And I like this. It's daytime. General's like, cool, I just want to farm. I don't really want to get involved until next night. I've got my urn, my phase. If I can make trouble stuff though. He has this ulti on Juggernaut, so maybe they want to try and kill him here. They are going to try. They know where Elder Titan is as well. They've spotted him out. Oh, they'll get him. Spirit into stop. Oh, the silence, silence into in sleep. Time. General. Oh boy, he's got himself out of a really sticky spot there. That wasn't even the mango committed from Mushi. He was already, already eating it. He lifted his sword. He wanted to get in there with the Omni Slash. But I didn't think they would get the silence in time because the Omni Slash is faster, but. He must have been waiting, trying to get one more right click on the Juggernaut before doing it. Yep. A little bit slow. Delayed it ever so slightly. But he survives. Price for it. So General, back up to full HP with that wonderful little urn charge that he had for himself. Farming on the tower. This is per like literally perfect from Na'Vi. Yeah, he's happy with that. Meanwhile, though, Ice 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 is getting a lot of space now after the Night Stalker kind of moved away. He is doing a lot of damage. Peel was up there, but he can't really solo lane against it. Nice Stalker using his ulti. Trying to run after a Juggernaut here. Well, Omni Slash expended. No spin. General turning and fighting, but with a Fade Bolt there, I think Mushi might just win oh this. So God, the misses. Fighting. The crit finally lands. Uh, critical Mushi. strike. Woo. Crossing his fingers, his toes, everything he's got. Critical the strike while he had a 50% chance to miss as well. That's a little bit unfortunate for Night Stalker there. I mean, he... He missed his first two attacks on the, on the Juggernaut, right? Exactly. That third hit crit had to come. It's, it only, it's only fair. Only fair. I mean, it's still unlikely. Only three attacks and getting a crit in. And oh. you have evasion. TP wasted. Ninja Boogie's been caught here. Roger with a very swift stomp. Indeed. So Nako going in as well. Boogie, hide. Oh, oh. oh my god, he's hiding for so long. He bought a lot of time for himself, but really inevitable. Dying. He's, meanwhile, his team is setting up for pushing mid, so every single second matters. We've not seen much from Dendi. He's really just been sitting mid, taking tier one, trading farm with Quop. I did, got that one kill with the help of General as she moved into the Roche pit, but look at Moon now. Oh, she slammed, destroyed, taken out of the game. That damage too big as the Primal Split from Ice 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 will come out, chasing into Roger. And with a spin, Moshi will secure a kill here around this mid tier one. We'll bring it down as well. The Neko in general doesn't look like they're done just yet, look. Fast burst on the Queen there. I don't think anyone expected that. PL gonna get chased a little bit here by the Brew. But really much gonna come. Fiend script though, available if you can't reach. But too slow. They're taunting away. Damn, he's fast when he pops the drums yeah, on the... drums pop rolling on the barrel. And the Tranquil out. Boots. I love that he goes for the Tranquil Boots. It's something that I've been saying a lot lately is... Tranquil Boots are really good, even on offlane heroes. When they break, they're still 65 movement speed. Brown Boots are 40, so that's a pretty big increase. And of course, 90 movement speed is insane whenever you're trying to traverse the map. Jabs. Oh, can you get out of this one? Dragon Tail, Queen Script comes first. The Nako with that range. He's gonna go Round down this kill. time. Even with Power Treads, Ench is still a very squishy hero. Very much max X HP. Armlet Dragonite easily brings it down, and that's going to be a kill over there for General, who dives in. Manages to secure the Rubik kill with the Urn and the Void. Damn it. Yeah, Dendi Dragon Knight, armor up. He's ready to go. No more messing around with Broodmother, pushing and pulling and trying to deal with all that nonsense. He has pretty much, you know, single focus, get some items, push towers, use my ulti when I can and try and kill some bad man, and the rest of his team can play around him. There's they no also more. know that there's no uh, Brewmaster split. That's one of the big reasons. Jab's gonna get caught out here as well. So Mako with the pure damage, nuking in. Uh, this is some fast-paced Dota from Na'Vi. Moon doesn't really have a chance to respond. In comes another sleep. Ice Ice tries to bring down Roger. With the help of Ninja Boogie, they might just be able to. Moon should be able oh, to yeah. blink forward. He has magic one, so he's gonna juke for a while, though. He's trying to get to a spot where he can TP out. No way is he gonna Goes for it. Me. No way. He's gone. He's under attack. Walker? Well, they didn't have a TP cancel, and after a magic wand, I think Rubik wouldn't have the right click to even kill him. But why didn't but Queen of Pain chase? That I cannot land. I don't know. Moon perhaps felt like we need to push out lanes as well at the same time, but I don't really think she should have chased for that kill. She but was the only one who could kill him. Now Moon might just be dead. 
Nightmare comes, cancels the TP. Oh, the one charge is in the blink away. There we go. Back to safety. Some some real panic moments for Mineski, though. Things are really slipping out of their control so quickly. They are. I think that moment when they just burst the queen on mid definitely hurt them a little bit mentally, because they didn't expect that queen would just evaporate like that. They mm. killed her so fast. Right now, the lineup of Navi really showing its strength. It's a blink dagger build on Dragonite as well, which is going to make it even harder to stay alive on uh, Queen or even on Brewmaster in some of these engagements. Mineski, time to start using the tools you have. Time to outplay. Sonic Wave ready. Primal Split also. Go with one level in the Astral Spirit. Rubik probably wants a different spell to take out, but for now, that will do. As they move into the dire jungle, past some PL illusions, scan from the dire and the radiant, both missing. Turns red just yet. They know it though. Mineski They're gonna know. run into each other. They find General to scream into Dagger, but Moon is gonna get caught by the Echo Stomp. Now they jump forward with the Phantom Lancer and the Earth Splitter coming in. The Queen of Pain has been found. The Sonic Wave not gonna come out as the Fiend's Grip cancels and jabs. Chased back by Crystallize, goes for the TP. Roger will finally die. Primal Split doing some good work there. A Suneco being tracked back by Ice, Ice, Ice. But the split has ended. And Na'Vi, they've lost an ET. They've killed the Dragon Queen of Pain. And now they're going to go in for more. You're right. Dendi jumps forward. In with the damage. And down goes Ice, Ice, Ice. Into a tier one for Na'Vi now. Uh, these fights, they just don't have the tools to deal with everything that Na'Vi is throwing at them. They used the Brewmaster split now. And they lost the fights really handedly. Losing two of their big core heroes for only a support. This is not looking great for Mineski. The push is probably going to continue even for a tier 2 tower. They want to. We'll see. Green Knight just backing up and making sure he has a TP scroll again. Has his dragon form for a good, what, 20 seconds? See what he does with it. Could poke a little bit on the high ground for sure, but everyone is alive, so backing out is no shame as well. And it still feels a bit early for Roshan to go in for something like that. Too early. Too early. Need to wait a little bit longer for that one, but still, very good engagement for Navi and going back to farming. They are the ones who are. Oh, they're actually going to go for it. They feel that with okay. split, split down, they can go for this. There is still a Sonic Wave and an Omni Slash with a Battle Fury on Juggernaut. So Mineski feasibly could try and come and do something here, but it's... They actually bring it down faster than I expected to. It's the fact the that the illusions. illusions are able to hit as well. The yeah. illusion hitting Roshan is a pretty big buff to all the illusions. And Peel in particular, who can just summon illusions by attack. And Mineski will now understand wow. where Na'Vi have been the past 30 seconds. In the pit they are. Crystallized with the Aegis done. Dendi holds out on this tier one dive bottom. Dendi. He's got a DD rune Can and a blink, blink dagger. Outs? Where's the dagger? It's going to be a fade bolt first. No, it's going to be a spin first. There's a the little bit of damage coming in from Mushi. Omni Slash at the ready. The Dragon Tail turn it back, but Dendi's got the ultimate toggle. The Omni oh, Slash bounces onto General. Dendi's out, and they've got the grip as well. Ninja Boogie and Jabs both fall. Mushi has to TP away. He really does. Moon, meanwhile, trying to chase after Roger, uses a defensive split, and immediately is primitive. Queen blinked away. Uh, he is going for a Rod of Aegis on the Elder Titan. Got to be a really good control item for him. To uh, get the Stomp combo even on Queen of Pain. A lot easier at least. But these fights, they're all Navi every single time. They're just coming out ahead. They're building more and more items. Every time I click over on the PL, I feel like I see a lot of progression. He's got something new every time. Yeah, same for Dragon Knights. He's getting really strong right now. This is shaping out to be a tough mid game coming up here for uh, Mineski. I just think this matchup, this series, has really been a lot about who gets a draft that's easier to play. Both teams are definitely capable of executing, but I think Navi put themselves in a better spot here, draft-wise. Yeah. Just uh, looking clean, looking like they understand what they want to do with it. I love the Blink Dagger purchase by Dragon Knight. It makes him able to reach all these fights. Especially against Quop and Brew, right? Being mm -hmm. able to either chase them as they drums and blink away, or just being able to snap jump with the Dragon Tail. Yeah. Follow through with the damage from the rest of the team. As Mineski, they smoke up to top. Ice 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 shows himself in lane, breaking the smoke. But the oh, other two, mid. the Rubik and the Queen of Pain, are actually going into mid. They'll see Suneko and Roger here with a Fade Bolt into Scream. Queen of Pain's thinking about the Sonic Wave, but there's no commitment. Dendi now this, jumps though. back in. He's blinked onto Rubik, and down goes Ninja Boogie. I'm so surprised they went there. They saw that there were three heroes mid, and... It's a grip. grip. They could lead with stun, but they're going to lead with the grip. It's whatever. They know spins down. Easy kill, yeah. I'm so surprised they went. They knew exactly what was there. They knew exactly what they had, which was just Juggernaut, Queen, and Rubik, which is not really that much. Dyer's Committed, 
they lost the fights, and meanwhile, there was the split pushing going on by General and Crystallize. And we're looking 18 and a half minutes in, your tier 3s, your racks, they're gonna start getting opened up here. Yeah, Phantom they, Mount moves up, tier 3 is getting He has the Aegis, down. so don't see why he wouldn't be up here and right clicking away. Dragonite doesn't have Dragon Form for too much longer, but they could definitely deal some serious damage here and then just back out. We'll see. Tier if the Dragonite three. loses his Dragon Form though, they might back up, but they could honestly try to continue. Every spell is ready on uh, Mineski though. We do have the level 2 Sonic Wave now as well. Yet to see one from Moon, but level 12. Ulti level 2 ready to go. The Glyph keep Navi back as the tier 3 survives. This is exactly what we saw before as well. The 1400 damage onto uh, a tier, <laughs> yeah. tier 3 tower and then back out. So the prep work is done. They're now going to be able to just go there whenever they win a team fight and very quickly translate it into something else. So Mushi, Battle Fury into Yasha. Really on his mind is just, please let me farm. Let me get some items. Let me push out waves. Don't end the game, guys. I can, I can do this. Which is kind of futile battle, I feel, because as I said, I think they needed a hero that pushes, plays fast pace, and does something because late game, I don't even think it's his to win. I think there's way too many things that are gonna mess with him. The, the Fiend script, the Enfeeble, the fact that Dragonite's super tanky, the PL being super farmed. I don't know. This is looking so hard. At least he is pushing faster. Being controlled a little bit by General, but nighttime, he is spin TVs. Away he goes. But now he's not farming. Now Navi pretty much know that Mineski are all back inside their base. Yeah, the entire map home. belongs to the deity. So they come back down towards bottom. They push in mid. And herding Mineski back in. Control this nice little slice of the map down here. DK ulti being up again. This is That's another go time. Bonus. Sure, all of Radiant have their ultis, but... Everything is right. up for Navi. Jump in. Oh, there that's... we go with the Sonic Wave as well. Navi, they're getting destroyed. Bring down the Dragon Knight. There we have it. But Seneco has the grip into the back end. Looking for Enchantress. Crystallize still alive. The Aegis is popped. Taken away. General runs back. Roger has spells. He has Splitter. He has Stomp. But Maneski playing timidly, defensively back up on top of their ramp. They took what they needed and they back up. Very disciplined play from the Radiant. Yeah, very, very clean. That was some good. Fast initiation right there, and they show that they do have some burst damage when they commit that Sonic Wave together with everything else at the same time. But even with the quick reactions of Navi stopping the Brewmaster split, they uh, lost that fight quite handily. This is this is a good hold for Mineski. Did not lose the tower as well. Very big to note. Tier three tower still stands. Oh, he's okay. Yeah, he's fine. He's trying to make sure he doesn't get bumped up or messed with in general. Finally, we see the Moon Sonic Wave. Big damage across, what, three or four heroes there? Oh, he landed it on, yeah, all four who were there. The Elder Titan was a little bit far when that fight actually happened. He wasn't close enough to quite uh, mess with Mineski as they initiated. I think that was the timing window that they, they hit. Yeah, Ice 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 just had the Blink Dagger. You know, he went for this Drums Midas build. And he pretty much bought the Blink 30 seconds, maybe a little bit less before that fight kicked off. So it was definitely a surprise for Na'Vi to be like, oh, he has the initiation tool now, guys. He's able to jump in on top of us. Got to be careful about that. Definitely helped out. Queen of Pain, running for a top rune. There is a Rod of Atus. Has to be careful. The Yules. Flies yeah. up into the air. Double damage rune is going to be there for Crystallize. Five though. seconds cooldown on the Fiend's Crypt. Can't be able to get it. Down a lot. Potentially in two minutes. Fastest spawn. 45. Finally, tier one bottom lane. Hello. For that tower. Notorious tower. <laughs> but stays alive. What was it? 52 minutes or something? It was. It was alive yeah, it for was something ridiculous. Crazy late. And in yeah, in a lot of the games, it just uh, lives past the 30 minute mark. But not in this game. Not today. Not today. 22 minutes. There we go. Money in the pockets of Mineski as they actually move even further forward looking for the tier 2 with the help of this catapult stolen by bit, jabs. A little bit early preemptive healing word. No one was really low HP and he drops it so that they're ready if something happens. They're gonna spin TP away. Very nice that you can activate it while already TP. It's gonna be fine. They did get a tower. They lost their tier 2 top though to the double damage PL who was split pushing. I, I didn't know that for the longest time. Like being able to cast like Vendetta and Ghost Walk, Invis spells, yeah. spin, Chi. armor yeah. toggling. Armor toggling is the funniest one. Yeah. <laughs> if you ever, if you ever TP out and you have like 
I don't know, a techie is right clicking you or something and you're just toggling him and feel so sad for him. Do anything to me. That's the funniest way. I think the first time I saw that was probably RTC when he did it. Dream. Well, now we're looking to really get up in the face of Maneski. Tier 3 bottom, focused by Dendi. Linking here. in. Wants the tower. The tower's gonna go down no matter what here. He's got BKB, so he's pretty happy with his safety, I think. I think they just want the shrine. They're a little bit scared after that last fight that they took on the high ground. So just backing out, taking the little bit safer objective. A lot of respect being given by Navi here, and of course, they are one step away from elimination. If they lose this game, they are out of the tournament. Put themselves in a good position now, though. Phantom Lancer, 14k net worth. Full SNY, Diffusal Blade, and going very quickly into the Eye of Skadi. Only about 1,200 gold away from it. Yeah, he's looking really farmed. Once he finishes the Eye of Skadi and the Butterfly together, that's going to make him super tanky, even against the Juggernauts with, uh, with the Battle Fury. Pick cleave down. Does Mushi have a new item? No, oh, he's, he's just finished the SNY himself. Not too far behind the DK and the PL, but... Go. And Moon definitely struggling a touch to keep up in net worth, but the, uh, that's the Queen of Pain for you, you know. Not snowballing with hero kills, relying on shuffling out waves and farming like this is always going to be difficult for the Queen of Pain. Yeah, she up. she wants to have a better early game than she's had. She's not having a good game at all. 1, 3, and 2. Got shut down pretty hard by this Night Stalker, I would say. Just the silence, having to build the Yule Scepter purely defensively against that as well. I'll... Obviously, a lot of times we see a Queen of Pain happy to have a Yules, but in this game, it feels more like, God, oh, I'm forced to do it, you know? Because yeah. this game, he's not canceling TP outs and stuff and getting kills because of it. He's just purely having it as a survival mechanism. Oh, they're stomping me. I've Oh, they silenced me. I've got a Yules. They're doing it and Let probably, probably uh, going to struggle for a while longer since he's still only level 14. Not the best position for him. Even with the Brewmaster, honestly, Isis, Ice, and Moon. Kind of sharing a two and a half roll almost in this game, it feels like. But Maneski, smoke up. The wraparound. Smoke Look at Ice, and Ice going in. Jump in. Phoenix is so fast. Now cancelled. There's a split, the stun, the projectile. It doesn't land onto Brew. They get the Earth Splitter in onto Mushi. Juggernaut has to spin away. The healing ward is taken out, so Mushi has to try and dip away from this. But the damage oh. looks substantial until the Omni Slash comes in. The doppelganger gets away from it, though, and Na'Vi have killed off every single important hero that the Radiant side have, and it will be a full team wipe, in fact, as an ultra kill goes to Crystallize, and Na'Vi, very strong position. Queen screaming at the river, you know. <laughs> Crying out her anger. She didn't hit anyone pretty much. I think she still kind of capped the Dragonite there on the end, but or on the side, but she yeah. That, they need a really good Sonic Wave and she barely hit one person. Crimea River Queen of Pain. One lane of racks. Looks like two. I think it's about time to prepare for the next game already for uh Mineski here. Pain yeah, is like, guys, the melee Rex is not dead. <laughs> I don't care. 8 to 26, 13,000 net worth lead. I think you are about right as Jabs gets caught with a rod of ATOS into Stomp. No push forward, General thinking about it. Drops his shoulder and gives it a bit of a nudge towards Jabs, but not go and commit for anything. And Na'Vi again playing very nicely. Get two lanes of Racked, fall back. Don't overcommit for anything here. Um, you could maybe have an argument that Maneski literally have nothing left to give. Every single big ulti is on cooldown, and now they could go. But you're also thinking about Dragonfall. It's about the same Earth the other Splitter. way around. Dragonite without his ulti is really, really not an impressive core. Because he suddenly doesn't hit anyone. He just gets kited around. It's like a sadder version of Sven. Um, because, yeah, they take Sven, give him a melee stun and no movement speed. And uh, <laughs> that's that's Dragonite without ulti. Yeah. Absolutely. And less damage, of course. And no, no cleave. <laughs> and no cleave. Yeah, okay. So it's a pretty gimp version of Sven then. Yeah. So dra Dragonite turns into a ranged Sven when he ulties me. Oh, uh, yeah, you could say that. No way. So Aegis on the side of the PL. Cheese on the Dragonite, who just finished an entire Assault Curious as well. This is looking like the final push is coming here. Can Mineski do anything to stop this? I do not think so. End game scenario. Uh, Ninja Boogie. Do you have buyback, my friend? No. 85 gold away from it. 
So it looks like the Rubik is going to be dead for a good 70 seconds or so. I love the way he played that. He ran down into a tree, fly over trees for a while so he can't get lifted. Oh, he, he got he got buyback from the money. Oh, from, from something. Oh, he killed the creep, I guess, before must, dying. Must have done something, but still, Mushi dead to the PL. I think he's given up on life and everything. The game is over now as Na'Vi so, will force the GG. He actually got buyback from the tower that Mushi pushed on ah. bottom. That's what happened. Like, kill the tower. I'll have buyback. Oh, I'm dead again. <laughs> Again, oh, well. stellar performance here. Crystallized with 11, 0, and 10 on his PL Dinanda.